Hi, so earlier today I watched a couple of really good movies. Uh, one was City of Ember and the other was one I've told you about on my film recommendations videos, uh, Joya Noël, which was a French movie shot not too, not too long ago, a few years ago. Uh, I picked up a copy on a whim on clearance uh, at the local uh, video store chain that was having a buy for get one free kind of deal I think it was anyway uh, it turned out to be exceptional uh, but it got me thinking uh, back then we saw the enemy as being godless uh, heathens uh, you know they called the German the Hun and they saw the German as being a godless creature uh, you know, and the only solution being to destroy all the Germans. And of course the war didn't end with, you know, a victory over an enemy, but by a pen stroke, because each power was too uh, powerful to be defeated, unfortunately. Um, but everyone thought that that was going to be the end of the world. Uh, and lo and behold, in the first year of the war, everyone on every side, got out of their trenches and celebrated Christmas together regardless of language and side of the war or whatever they uh, commemorated their fallen comrades uh, held services, sang songs shared uh, drinks and uh, cigarettes and sweets and just generally had uh, the kind of Christmas that I think a lot of people would really want to see and as I was watching the movie it was amazing uh, because now today between those European countries we have a good deal of that kind of brotherhood Europe is united as a nation well a sort of nation uh, a league if you will uh, and they're opening their borders, they're friendly towards one another on a lot more respects than previously. And it's really something to see uh, compared to, if you know European history, the absolute bad blood that was there before. Now, on the other hand, you take a look at, let's say, City of Ember, which was the other movie I watched today, and they showed basically a post-apocalyptic kind of adventure story. Imagine if you kind of combined Fallout with, oh, I'm not sure, The Goonies. Uh, if you combine those two together, you'd basically have City of Ember. Not a bad movie as it goes, but not really one that I'd want the kids to watch, because it would leave them confused as to what exactly happened. Bill Murray is, you know, an absolutely terrific actor, but unfortunately in this one, his character is very dark. And um, I think it would... Uh, I, I, I just think it is not uh, quite his best role. Uh, but, you know, he can play a bad guy if he if he needs to. Uh, that being said, uh, there's a big push of late, over the last decade or so, with movies, to tell stories about pre, during, and post-apocalypse. You've seen it, you know, I'm sure, in all these disaster movies, where not just the buildings burning down like in Towering and or earthquake, you know, the earth is quaking, obviously. Uh, or even a perfect storm where some, you know, something is brewing for just this one little fishing boat that's out there. Uh, and instead, you're seeing movies where the whole world is destroyed. And they did this a lot back in the 50s because there was this new enemy that nobody understood and nobody was willing to really sit down and learn about or anything like that other than persons in the government who said, well, we need to be afraid 
but we don't need to be scared poopless. I'm going to say poopless because I think I'll get in trouble if I go for the gusto. Aside from that, uh, it it really doesn't benefit us to think that the world's going to end. I mean, yes, it's nice to live every day as if it were your last, but why not live every day as if it were your first? You know, as if you had never been alive up until this point. And instead, you're trying each thing that day as if it were new. And you're trying something maybe that you've never tried before, or whatnot. You know, just try and look at something with new eyes. And I'm not saying go through the world naive and without memory. Uh, because that's really what the consumerists want you to do. Because you drop one fad, you move on to the other, you lose one style of clothing, or you lose one pop idol, and you move on to the next. And it's just consume, consume, consume. You have no memory of what preceded. Uh, personally, I'm a consumer of the older things. The stories from the old days. Uh, older music and things because it just suits my tastes and it's it's like it's like if you look through ancient ruins and discover a piece of treasure you know if you were able to find an audio CD of let's say Jesus or Moses or um, Confucius or Buddha speaking, and you understood every word they were saying. Of course, none of these people, when they were alive, spoke English. So, uh, aside from that, you'd have to understand what they were saying. But if you could hear them speak from, you know, beyond the grave, literally, it would change your entire perspective suddenly it would become more real. And that's what happened for me when I did a trip to Germany uh, as part of an internship. Uh, it was only for a month, but while I was there I got to see things there, remnants from World War II and the Soviet era, that I had no idea existed or had only read about in textbooks prior. I got to see bullet holes in the sides of buildings from when the Soviets invaded Berlin. I got to walk into Buchenwald concentration camp. And as we walked in, the sky was gray, it was cold, and as we walked out, suddenly the sun came out and it was warm again. I don't know why the mood lighting suddenly changed naturally like that, but it was really beneficial to the experience. Um, and that's the thing, is... If you treat what you know was as real and treat what you don't know to be real as unreal or as, you know, hypothetical, I think you go through life with a lot more realism. Just as if you treat something uh, to the point where you appreciate it fully as if it were new. I think that that can really benefit your whole point of view. I'm going to sign off, but before I do, I want to give a quick shout out to Miss B. Jones, uh, a young woman who recently uh, has been documenting her sex change from a young man uh, with a young woman trapped inside to a young woman. Uh, it's an inspirational story, uh, if you have the chance to check it out. Uh, I think that uh, that she's a, an interesting person, and it doesn't have the benefit of Dateline or or ABC or CNN's editing with uh, telling the story. It's the person themselves telling the story, which I think is more interesting. So check that out if you want to. It's not really any skin off my nose if you don't. I just think it's a cool story to listen to. Anyway, take care. <laughs>